Hello students, you all know that we are going through a crucial moment with this pandemic COVID-19. So that your studies does not get in harm. Today, I am going to teach you a chapter of geography and this for the class 9 students and the chapter is atmosphere. Atmosphere, the word atmosphere has been derived from a Greek word atmos means gases and sphere means layer. So it is the layer of gases that surrounds or envelops the path. So what about the gases we see around us that we are breathing oxygen, the plants are using carbon dioxide. Where these gases are present? Because all these gases are present in the atmosphere. So it is said that it is a layer of gases. We know that we have three layers: hydrosphere, atmosphere, and lithosphere. We have read about lithosphere. We have come to know about the hydrosphere. And now we are going to know about the atmosphere. So atmosphere is a layer of gases. It is like an envelope to the earth. And one thing that how this Atmosphere is embedded in the earth, it is due to the force of the gravity. Means it is held to the earth due to the force of the gravity. Now, what this atmosphere is composed of? So, I've written the composition of the atmosphere. Now, this atmosphere is composed of three main components or three main constituents they are gases, water vapor, and dust particles. Now, first come the gases. Among the gases, I have been seeing nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, iron, helium, neon, methane, krypton. These are the main gases that the atmosphere is made up of. Now, nitrogen is a maximum amount, it is about 78%, oxygen is 20.93%, carbon dioxide 0.41%, argon 0.93%, and all other gases. They are found in very little amount, or you can say in traces. That's why the percentage I have not mentioned. Now we have to read about the importance of the nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. These are three main gases which are very important for us. Now, this nitrogen, as we know, it is important for the growth of the plant. It also reduces the process of combustion oxidation. Next, it also used for making the nitrogen fertilizer. Oxygen it is used for breathing, it is used, used for combustion or help with the combustion. Carbon dioxide, you know, it is used for the green plants for the making of the food through the process of photosynthesis. It is also a greenhouse gas and it also absorbs the heat, it also maintains the temperature or regulates the heat. Next comes water vapor. You know that all the water bodies they are getting heated up and the water is evaporating and this vaporized water in the atmosphere we call water vapor. Now this water vapor it is important for the precipitation means if you see any kind of rainfall, snowfall or the cloud formation it is possible because of this layer or because of this composition. Next come dust particles. Now dust particles, it helps in a cloud formation, it also helps to give the sky different color. How? Because this dust particle they scatter the solar radiation of different wavelengths and the different types of different colors of the sky appears like blue, red, because of the scattering of the solar radiations. So this is the main compositions of the atmosphere and importance of each of the composition you have to remember you can say this these gases like nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide they are found mainly in the lower layers of the atmosphere water vapor also mainly concentrated in the lower layer of the atmosphere why because the, due to the heat or you can see the contact of with the water surface increases as you move upward so many lower layers are having this water vapor or you can say dust particles so this is all about the composition of the atmosphere and what is atmosphere. One thing that is atmosphere we are talking about. Now this atmosphere you know that it does not have any sharp boundary. You cannot separate 
the space with the atmosphere. So that's why this exact thickness is not known, but we take an average thickness, which is about from the mean sea level. You will see that it's an average thickness we used to take because there is no sharp boundary between the space and the atmosphere. Next, we will read about the structure of the atmosphere. So, as you can see, here I have shown the structure of the atmosphere. Now, if you arrange the atmosphere according to its composition, gaseous composition and temperature, we can see that the atmosphere has five layers, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, ionosphere and exosphere. Now, first comes the troposphere or it is the lowermost layer. Now, this troposphere is said to be at a height of 8 km over the poles and 18 km over the equator. Now, this troposphere is the most important layer. Why? Because it consists of all the life supporting gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, water vapor, all are present in this layer. So, it is the importance of this layer, all weather phenomena occurs in this layer, and life supporting gases are found in this layer and in this layer as we have seen the temperature I'm showing that it is decreasing temperature decreases with height as we move upward the temperature decreases and the rate is 1 degree centigrade for 165 meter and it's called normal lapse rate. Now where the troposphere stops and a nuclear starts that boundary is called tropopause pause means to stop so tropopause is the boundary between troposphere and stratosphere. Now the next layer that is the stratosphere is extended up to 50 km and this layer, in this layer there is no clouds. Why there is no clouds? Because there is no water vapor, there is no dust particles, so there is no formation of clouds. As a result, jet planes prefer to fly through these layers. So the jet planes, as clear weather is there, that's why the jet planes fly through this layer. And in this layer, there is their strong wind also blows called jet stream. Now within this layer, the upper part, there is a layer called ozone layer. Here you can see the maximum concentration of the ozone gas. Now this ozone gas, what it does, it is protecting us from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. It lies within the stratosphere. Now where the stratosphere ends and the nuclear starts, that boundary zone is called stratopause. So the stratosphere stops and the mesosphere starts. It is the next layer, the mesosphere. The mesosphere, see it is extended up to 80 km. Again, in this layer, the temperature starts to decrease. Here, the temperature is very low and it is the coldest layer. Okay? As we have seen in the stratosphere, the temperature is increasing with height, but in the mesosphere, the temperature is decreasing again. Next comes the ionosphere. And the boundary between ionosphere and the mesosphere is called mesopause. Now, ionosphere, it is the next layer extended up to 400 km. Now, this ionosphere, as the name suggests, it is consisting of ions. Here, particles are positively or negatively charged due to this ultraviolet radiations. They are charged and the name came ionosphere. Now, this ionosphere helps in communication. Long wave communication, short wave communication, is broadcasting of television, all these things. Now, beyond the ionosphere, means beyond 400 km, we say it is exosphere. Okay? The exosphere is merged with the space, and we know very little about this exosphere because very less research has been done on the exosphere. So, this is about the structure of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is having five layer structure and these two layers exosphere and ionosphere these two layers together is also sometimes called thermosphere 
And one interesting thing about this atmosphere is that you can see wave of light on this due to sinus part A in the northern hemisphere is called aurora borealis and in the southern hemisphere is called aurora australis. Now, so this is about the structure of the atmosphere. Next, we will read about the significance of the atmosphere. Now, we will read about the significance of the atmosphere and some important terms related to this chapter. The significance of the atmosphere, as I have written, you can see it protects us from the UV rays, it provides light supporting gases, it saves us from the meteors, it helps in communication. So, these are the main significance or importance of the atmosphere. If other importance are there, that also can be mentioned. Next, I have written ozone hole. Now, what is ozone hole? It is a depletion of the ozone layer due to release of CFC and other greenhouse gases like methane, carbon dioxide, etc. So, the ozone layer is getting depleted due to re release of this chlorofluorocarbon. They are converting this ozone into simple oxygen. So, the ozone layer is not able to protect us from the ultraviolet radiations. If this ultraviolet radiation comes or reach the earth's surface, we will have many problems that will damage the tissue, we will have skin cancer, these problems or it may increase the temperature of the earth. So this is a ozone hole and it was first identified with the Antarctic origin. So ozone hole is a depletion of ozone layer. Next, I have written global warming. Now, what is global warming? It is a worldwide increase in temperature. The temperature of the earth is increasing. Why it is increasing? Due to the trapping of heat. When the solar radiations are coming, they are coming in short waves. But when they are returning, they are going, going long waves. So, due to these greenhouse gases, like mainly carbon dioxide, this heat is trapped, this long wave cannot pass and it is remains in the earth and it is increasing the temperature of the earth. So, this worldwide increase in temperature of the earth is called global warming. Now, what is the cause? Cause of the global warming is increasing in carbon dioxide. Now, why is carbon dioxide is increasing? It can be natural or it can be man-made. Natural like volcanic eruption, everything. That's why. Right. And artificial like burning of fossil fuels is releasing huge amount of carbon dioxide. Next effect, what will happen in this global warming? The global warming, due to this global warming, the polar ice caps are melting. The weather are changing. There is frequent cyclone, like this, the temperature is increasing. There is flood, as a, there is a melting of polar ice caps, there is a huge amount of like, increase in the level of water. So there is flood. So these are the main effects of the global warming. Now, we have to control this global warming. How we can control? See, I've been planting trees which will absorb this carbon dioxide, less use of fossil fuel, and we have to keep using of alternative fuels, less use of chemical fertilizers. So this can be done to reduce the global warming. So we have to read about this global warming and this ozone hole in this chapter. Okay, so students, this is all about the atmosphere chapter. Please follow it. Continue your studies by following this. It will help you, I think. So stay home, stay safe.